Letho of Gullet, the Kingslayer, a Witcher of the School of the Viper. The origins of this Witcher are unknown. It could be assumed he is from Gullet, but many Witchers adopt titles like these to appear more familiar and trustworthy, so not even this is truly known. What is known is how he entered the story of the Witcher. After being struck by a slizzard's tail, the Witcher Geralt of Rivia found and saved him, and in exchange, Letho assisted the Witcher, his fellow Viper Witchers in tow, with Geralt's pursuit of the Wild Hunt. They found them in Nilfgaard at Hangman's Tree, where they discovered the wraiths were not ethereal, but flesh and blood. A stalemate was met, and the Witcher Geralt offered his life in exchange for his lovers, Yennefer. The Wraiths accepted and left Yennefer with Letho and his fellow Viper Witchers. They could have left her, but Letho decided to help her out of respect for the Witcher who had saved him and offered his life for hers. She ultimately proved nothing but trouble for them, suffering from amnesia, in constant pain, trying to seduce each of the company. Eventually, they were all caught by the forces of Nilfgaard and incarcerated. However, this was not the end of the Viper's story, but merely the true introduction to it. A deal was struck with Emir Var Emres, Emperor of Nilfgaard, to assassinate the kings of the Northern Realms, and in exchange, he would restore the School of the Viper. Letho's first target was Estarad Tissen, king of the richest of the Northern Kingdoms, Kovir and Povis. But this event never came to pass, as Letho's company came into contact with Sheila de Tanzaville, a sorceress who offered to instead organize the assassination of King Demavend III of Edirne. Letho murdered Demavend, then followed Sheila's other suggestion and introduced himself to Eorveth, the leader of a Scortel commando. He earned the elf's trust by presenting him with the head of the Northern King and then requisitioned some further help, this time with the assassination of the King of Temeria, King Foltest. Letho was aware there was to be a siege, headed by the King of the Lavalette's Castle, so engineered a scheme in which he would appear to be a tortured and innocent monk who could later be present when, during the siege, the King's children were taken to the monastery. It was here Letho killed the King, but was almost stopped by Foltest's bodyguard, Geralt of Rivia, who had escaped the Wild Hunt's clutches, but luckily, like Yennefer, suffered from amnesia. Letho fled with the assistance of the Scoia'tael, and Geralt was left by the body of Foltest, framed as the Kingslayer. He was then put in prison. After fleeing, Letho went to Flotsam, and made an effort to betray Yorveth by turning his lieutenant, Kiaren, against him. Kiaren refused, so Letho slaughtered his entire unit, and left him to be captured and tortured by the local guard. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to the Kingslayer, Geralt had begun to pursue him, also travelling to Flotsam. After some further adventures involving Akeron and Sheila de Tanzaville, he met with Kiaren, who exposed Letho's treachery. Geralt then presented this information to Yorveth, who agreed to trick the Viper Witcher into revealing his true intentions. During this, the Blue Stripes, a commando troop headed by Vernon Roach, attacked them, leaving Letho and Geralt to face off in an elven ruin. Letho defeated Geralt, but let him live, telling Geralt they were now even, as Geralt had once saved him. This was when Letho made haste to Flotsam, where, after killing the elf Cedric, he forced the sorceress Triss Marigold to teleport them both to Vergen, a dwarven town in Upper Edern, where he could regroup with Serret and Orcs, the other Viper Viper Witches. Upon regrouping with Serret and Orcs, he informed them that the Scoia'tael they were hiding with would soon learn of their betrayal, so he left to go to the upcoming summit at Loch Muin, letting the other witches handle the assassination of King Henselt of Kedwin. After arriving at the summit of Loch Muin, Letho made contact with the Nilf Guardians who were there, and then, at the actual summit, told Radovid V a half-truth, that the sorceresses were his employers, and they had helped with the assassinations, which is only partly true, as at the time, the Lodge didn't know Letho acted under the orders of the Nilfgaardian Emperor. They simply wanted the Adernian King killed so they could more easily capture Upper Edern and create a magical state. He told Radovid that the Lodge of Sorceresses wished to remove the Northern rulers that acted against their will. This is what led, in part, to Radovid's witch hunts. The story of Letho from here becomes a little more complicated as it can branch off in many different directions. He can save Triss, or Geralt saves her. He can either kill Sheeta de Tonzaville, or Geralt saves her. Regardless, Letho explains everything to Geralt in the final part of the events at Loch Muin, and at this point, Geralt's memories return, and he either kills the Kingslayer, or allows him to leave.
Assuming Letho survives this encounter, his deal with Emir Var Emreis is not honoured and he finds himself on the run, as Letho is the last living witness to Emir's plans and he cannot afford loose ends. The Assassin of Kings, ironically, found himself hunted by assassins of his own, and after fleeing from place to place, he found himself in an abandoned manor in Velen, littered with wraiths. As fate or destiny would have it, whilst lying low there, a familiar white-haired witcher was in the area, on business, and the two happened to meet and discuss Letho's life after the events at Loch Muin. Complications arise again when bandits arrive to kill the Viper Witcher, as this story can veer off into many different outcomes. Geralt can walk away or help Letho kill the bandits, at which point the two witches go to the only person who knew Letho's location, a man called Louise. They fought off Louise and his men as he had sold the Witcher out, and after leaving the man for dead, they went to the town of Lindenvale to confront Letho's pursuers. Letho mentioned to Geralt that whatever happened next, he was not to interfere. The Kingslayer confronts the hunters alone, but is ultimately defeated. Geralt can either interfere and kill them all, or allow them to leave with Letho's Viper Medallion as proof. If the hunters are left alive, Letho is happy, as it turns out he had taken some Zangrabarian venom, allowing him to appear dead, and now the hunters would spread the news far and wide that Letho of Gullet was dead. Otherwise, Letho still survives, but remains on the run. Regardless of these outcomes, Geralt can then offer Letho the option to go and stay at Kaer Morn. He agrees, and if Geralt didn't offer, Letho suggests he may head to Zarakania. If Letho goes to Kaer Morn, he fights valiantly, assisting Lambert and Geralt in the initial assaults, and later helping in the skirmish within the keep. After the fighting, Letho states that he plans to head east, across the mountains. And after that, who knows? Before this entry comes to an end, it is worth discussing this witch's weaponry, appearance, and skills. From what we have seen, I'd say Letho is one of the most skilled fighters out of the known witches. Of course there aren't many left and we rarely see what they are fully capable of, but based on what we've seen, for example the assassination of Demavend, and how difficult the first fight is against him in The Witcher 2, I'd say he is one of the most skilled out of them. He has been known to use the classic steel and silver witcher swords, bombs, signs, and two daggers, the latter being used to gruesome effectiveness. His appearance is that of muscle. He is broad, bald, scarred, burnt, and incredibly strong, with his armor showing off the strength he possesses. Letho is one of the more developed and forefront witches within the world of the Witcher, and his visual presence is only lesser to Geralt himself. If I had to pick a Witcher I wanted as a future protagonist, Letho of Gullet would be high on my list. Thank you for watching, be sure to like today's video and subscribe, and best of luck on the path.